okay with uh, bringing the meeting to order? Bring the meeting to order. Can um, roll call Maria, Gary, President Madrid. Amanda's here. Here. Rick? I'm here. And I'm here. Pledge of Allegiance. Rick, will you do it this time? Lead us in the pledge. You bet. Uh, please join me in the pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Kylie, do we have any public comments? We do not. If not, um, I'd like to have a motion to go into a closed session, but first let me tell you what we're going to be doing in there. We're going to fire a lot of people tonight. Ooh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pupil personnel, expulsion case number four, 2324, and expulsion case number five, 2324, expulsion cases number one, 2324, annual reviews AR6, 2324, through AR number eight, 2324. Conference on Litigation, Government Code Section 54956.9A, Current Litigation, 10 Cases, CIVDS 1907172, CIVDS 2011183, CIVDS 2022956, CIVDSB 2111303, CIVSB 22 Two zero three zero three, CIVSB two two one eight six seven six, CIVSB two 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 seven zero three two three, CIVSB two zero four I mean two three zero four eight six five, CIVSB two three one four zero seven three, CIVSB two 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 three two two one seven one, Government Code Section five four nine five four point five, and five four nine. 56.9 anticipated litigation one case 220 to 2105 public employees discipline dismissal release reassignment transfer leave title certificated and classified public employees appointment resignation retirement reduction title certificated classified employees conference with the labor, labor negotiator agency negotiator Dustin Conrad Employees Organization, Apple Valley Unified Teachers Association. Conference with Labor Negotiator, Agency Negotiator, Dustin Conrad. Employee Organization, CSEA. Conference with Labor Negotiation, Agency Negotiator, Trinae Nelson. Employee Organization, Unrepresented. Conference with Real Property Negotiator, Government Code 54956.8. Negotiating parties, Matthew Schulenberg, Apple Valley Unified School. Security matters, government code section 54957. Consultation with Apple Valley Unified School, District Chief of Police. And number 10, superintendent evaluation. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to go into closed session now. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
good. Okay, well, we'll bring it to order. We're going to start off with reports. Our student representatives from uh, Yucca Loma, fine looking group tonight. We have uh, Miko Thomas, Lalei Nichols, JC Ann Diaz, Bella Coronado, and Emily Curry. Cute. She's cute. She just went silent. We need noise sound. There we go. Good evening, board members, Superintendent Nelson, and Assistant Superintendents. My name is Emily, and these are my fellow student council members, Bella, Miko, JCN, and Leilani. We are student council representatives for Yakaloma Elementary. We are honored and excited to share with you tonight all the wonderful and amazing things that are happening on our campus. This year started with a special music video to welcome us back to school from Mr. Lopez, our favorite band teacher, really our only band teacher. Mr. Bradley, who is not shy and the best backup singers in the high desert, our very own teachers, Mr. Vic, Ms. Phelps, Mrs. Ulrich, and Ms. Rob. If that doesn't make you feel welcome at Yucaloma, nothing will. <laughs> oh, and watch for our Christmas edition to be released soon. Meanwhile, in sports news, we play a wide variety of sports that everyone is welcome to play. Third through sixth graders have participated in baseball, flag football, and soccer. Soccer is our most popular with almost 90 students signed up and attending practice. Soccer season will end mid-January with a big game. We invite you to come watch us play. Our eSports team is also practicing hard so they can be repeat champions. Mr. Clark proudly displays our esports trophies in his office and shows them off to anyone who visits, visits our school. In addition to all the sport opportunities we have on campus, we would like to share with you all the clubs students have opportunities to participate in. We have band, calming tools, book club, puzzle club, Tinkering Club, Tutoring, Board Games, Drama Club, Esports, Lego Club, Astronomy Club, STEM Club, Ceramics Club, Matilda Club, Art Club, Around the World Club, and our personal favorite, Student Council. Mr. Clark says if you can't find something fun to do at Yucca Loma, you just aren't looking hard enough. Our hiking club is still going strong. We have grown so large that we have broken into two groups. We were able to visit Big Bear and Joshua Tree National Park and to enjoy fresh air and the beauty of the outdoors. In addition, the student council was able to participate in a Disney Leadership Conference. We highly recommend it. Mickey says to say hi. We all welcome you to the to the next half of the school year as we host more family activities, a dance or two in our ever popular family movie nights. We welcome all you to visit Yucaloma to see all the great things happening on our campus. In fact, we have a Christmas crafting night game night on December 15th. Come get your photo taken with Santa, make a craft, and sip some hot cocoa with us. Thank you for your time and attention. And most importantly, make, make it a great day or not. The, the choice, choice is yours. That was outstanding. Vanguard Prep, Amara Sarkis, Brooks Johnson.
Good evening, board members and Ms. Nelson. I'm Amira Sarkis, the ASB President at Vanguard Preparatory. And I'm Brooke Johnson, the ASB Vice President. We are beyond excited to have the opportunity of speaking with you all this evening. This year has been off to a phenomenal start, and we can't wait to share all the great things we have done so far. As a leadership class, our focus is to create opportunities for students to not only participate in activities, but share their voice in order to be a part of the creative process. At Vanguard, our leadership program believes that students have more buy-in when they get to help be a part of planning. Our goal has been to create opportunities to involve as many students as possible in our activities this year. Every Friday, our Falcons get the chance to play fun lunch, lunch time activities and win prizes. Another way we've accomplished this is through student surveys. For our winter formal, we hosted a voting form where six through eighth grade Falcons gave us their theme ideas. The person who suggested the winning theme received a free winter formal ticket. In August, we hosted our first dance of the year, Let's Hula, with a big turnout of 300 students. Falcons were able to dance, buy lunch concessions, or Kona ice play games, visit the painting lounge, or even take photos of photo booth with free final pictures. Everyone had a great time and gave positive feedback. One of the things we like to focus on over at Vanguard is SOAR. So it's a part of our core behavior values that we focus on daily. SOAR stands for self-control, on task, always respectful, and responsible. Students at Vanguard live the SOAR expectations. We demonstrate SOAR expectations in everything we do, not only by showing positive behavior on campus, but also serving within our community. To help keep our students on safe SOAR behavior, we have started an amazing program called Kindness Club. Kindness Club has been a great opportunity for students to come meet fellow Falcons at lunch and participate in kindness activities. We really feel that students who sign up have a positive and exclusive experience. This year, the Renaissance Leadership Class has started Wellness Wednesday, where students can come in during middle school lunch and participate in activities and discussions that support their mental health. Our October was full of events and service opportunities for our Falcons. We kicked off the month with our annual Oktoberfest stock drive. As a whole school, we collected over 1,900 pairs of socks for the Better Way Women's Shelter. We hosted a spooky Halloween social for our second through third grade students, as well as a movie night for our middle school Falcons. Red Ribbon Week was full of spirit days and lunch activities that supported this year's national theme, Be Kind to Your Mind, Live Drug Free. Our most participated spirit day that week was Have the Power to Say No to Drugs, where students got to wear superhero shirts. Fall Festival was a successful night hosted by PTSO, where students and their families got to wear their costumes and participate in fun activities. The month of November focused on the first trimester renaissance and celebrating our bronze, silver, and gold renaissance falcons for their academic achievements. The theme was Willy Wonka and the Great Factory. On Tuesday, November 14th, renaissance, renaissance hosted a 4.0 party for falcons who earned their gold tickets in 5th through 8th grade. Students received a 4.0 shirt and got to party with fun games, eat pizza, and delicious snacks. On Friday, November 17th, the Renaissance Rally, Willy Wonka and the Grave Factory, was hosted for over 250 fifth through eighth grade Falcons. That made our November fun for Falcons campus wide. On December 1st, we kicked off our Santa for Seniors tradition, where Falcons get the chance to, to gift the senior of our community a special gift. This program lasts up until December 18th. Also on December 1st, we hosted a holiday movie night for our fourth through sixth grade students, where they watched The Grinch. As we wrap up 2023, we look forward to continuing building community and planning activities for our fellow Falcons. 2024 promises to be filled with even more activities and events. We very much appreciated your time this evening and can't wait for the next time Vanguard ASB gets the privilege of speaking with you all. Go Falcons! And remember, Falcons don't just fly, they soar high! Good job. I Desert Premier Academy. Isma Solis. You better not mess up. Uh, I, I don't know why, but I'm pretty nervous. I, I did this a lot of times, but I mean, I'm still nervous. I don't know. <laughs> All right, sorry. All right. Uh, good evening, President Bender, Board Members, Superintendent Nelson, and Executive Cabinet. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving break. November was uh, really a great month, especially the food. We all got Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm extremely grateful for the food that was provided. Uh, this, uh, this semester, we have 22 students that are graduating. We are proud of those seniors and wish them all well. Thank you, Ms. Nelson and Mr. Schlosser. That's how you say it, right? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure. I didn't want to pronounce your name wrong, so. <laughs> for coming to visit us and taking with, talking with the student advisory team. We feel grateful that you guys have took your time out of your day to listen to us and what we had to say. 
We mentioned a couple of things like more school activities, such as a spirit week and events and a new paint job for our school, like black and yellow. For our school owls, uh, we look forward to seeing you again in January. The Mayor's Youth Leadership Summit gave us an opportunity to make our voices heard in the community. We had seven High Desert Premier students that attended. We put our skills to the test. They put us together in a group and gave us 30 minutes to solve a Lego set without a guide. They gave us this test to develop our communication, communication skills, our <laughs> team building and bonding, while other groups of students with president. All right. Presented. Pre yeah, presented. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, presented projects. The projects were real life projects that were going to be brought up later that month. One was the swimming lessons in spring break to prevent children drowning. That's the one we all agreed on. We all like how you guys are. I mean, made a choice between that one. So that's the one we got. I mean, it was a good one too. I mean, I thought I really liked it. I mean, I, th I thought the homeless one, one was good too, but that's the one we chose. So. But uh, the Wellness Center and our school nurse have created a monthly newsletter for our uh, school High Desert Premier students. Ms. Nilo and Ms. Bryant included information of depression and anxiety for our awareness of December, as well as techniques and tips for our schools, for our, our students to cope. That's what I handed you guys out. So you guys could all see it. You guys could take your time and look at it if you want. I mean. There are two programs I would like to mention that are coming to HDPA. First, Mr. Smith is looking to bring the Save Our Sons program. This will benefit many of the male students on our campus. Second, we have been using SmartPass, which is our digital hall pass and has been in effect for the last two months and has been great. It takes some time to get used to, but it gives you a better understanding of where our students are on campus. We have a new school club too. Our golf club with Mr. Gonzalez will start next semester. Today is also National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. More than 3,500 Americans lost their lives that day. By remembering this tragedy, our community can solve enormous obstacles and learn from them. Good luck to everyone on their finals and have a great break. I hope you all have a good New Year's and happy holidays. I'll see you all next year. Very good. Grand Hills High School, Hana, look at Good evening, Executive Cabinet, Board Members, and attendees. My name is Hannah Forge, the Junior President at Granite Hills. I hope you all had a very wonderful Thanksgiving break, and I am very excited to be back here tonight. ASB has been very busy. For all of December, ASB is holding an ornament painting fundraiser during lunch. Students can come and buy ornaments to paint, which ASB will then pass back to our students on Fridays. ASB is also working very hard to get ready for this year's winter formal that will take place in January. This year's theme is a night in New York, and we are very excited. Our link here is getting ready for... Cocoa and Cram to help prepare, prepare our freshmen for the upcoming finals week. Next Wednesday, students with 97% attendance or better through first semester will have a special lunch with music, games, and a raffle for prizes. This is one of our very positive ways we are recognizing students for their accomplishments. Our graphics class provided swag for the Town of Apple Valley event, which was a huge success. 27 of our CTE students completed three certifications of SkillsUSA Framework Certification Challenges and will be recognized on December 6th on Zoom. The celebration will have the executive director on the call, and Granite Hills has 103 SkillsUSA competitors registered for regional events. In the beginning of November, theater held Willy Wonka the Musical for two weekends, which had a great turnout. I actually did see a few of you there, so I hope you enjoyed it. The next week, theater held auditions for Julius Caesar, which will be in January. I'll have more info for you guys on that one next month. Today, Cougar Bakery hosted the Sweet Genius Competition, where students from across the high desert demonstrated their confectionery skills. Our choir classes have upcoming holiday performances at Talent and Barnes Noble and a local church. We also have many recitals and performances. Today and tomorrow is our dance recital. December 11th is the vocal and piano recital. December 12th is the guitar recital. And December 14th is our holiday concert. Our Key Club handed out candy canes at the Apple Valley Tree Lighting Ceremony, as well as attending the annual Key Club Fall Rally at Six Flags when they had a blast. 40 Abbott seniors went on a five-day college field trip just before Thanksgiving break. Students toured 15 campuses from Northern California to Southern California, and the experience helped many of our students decide on where they would be attending college next year. Our 10th grade AVID students also had the opportunity to tour a college campus, visiting USC and the Natural History Museum. And currently, our AVID program is hosting shadow days for 8th grade AVID students across the district. 
Our mock trial team finished off their season fairly strong last night with a competition against Rancho Cucamonga High School. And although we are currently anxiously awaiting our scores, I would like to say I'm pretty confident that we may have brought home a win last night. The team's had huge growth this year, and as captain, we are excited, very excited for what the 2024 season will bring us. As for athletics, our fall sports teams made history this year, and they all had their end-of-the-season banquets. For girls basketball, the team picked up their first win of the season against Big Bear on Monday. The team is very young and getting better each and every day. For boys basketball, the team is currently 5-2 and won the University Prep Jaguar Classic this past weekend with a perfect 4-0 record. The team is heavy with experience and looking to compete for a league championship. Girls soccer. The team is currently 1-1 and will start tournament play over the next few weeks. The team is much younger than in past years, but the talent level is balanced throughout the field. The team's expectations have stayed the same, winning its sixth Desert Sky League title in a row. Boys soccer. The team is currently 1-1 and will also start tournament play over the next few weeks. The team is also much younger than in past years, but like the girls' team, the approach this year will be a little bit more balanced. The team will be competing for a league title, and expectations are high with this group. For boys wrestling, the team is currently 1-1, and we are excited by the number of student-athletes as a part of the program. We currently have 32 students in the program, allowing the school to field a full varsity and JV team for the first time in over 10 years. The group is working hard and will be hosting their annual AI Dingwall tournament this weekend. As for girls wrestling, the team has grown to 10 student athletes in the program and the girls have a one-to-one record for dual meets. There are many individuals doing amazing things at the tournaments on the weekends and two student athletes finished in the top five this past weekend at the Santa Ana invite. For girls water polo, the team is currently seeking their first one of the season. They are working hard each day and improving their skills to get ready for league play. The team is hopeful to make playoffs with an experienced team led by two captains who have been in the program for four years. We thank you for your support of Granite Hills and hope you have a wonderful winter break. As always, Maroon and Gray lead the way. Apple Valley High, Sophia Brandt. All right, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, members of the board and attendees. My name is Sophia Brandt, and I'm the Apple Valley High School Associated Student Body Line President. Today, I'll be sharing with you what our students and staff have been up to for the past month. In athletics, Sun Devils always excel, and we are now entering our winter season. Our fall sports had their banquets to give out awards and celebrate the end of their seasons. Basketball, soccer, and wrestling started, and they're doing incredibly. And I want to mention that last night's boys basketball game against Victor was... <sighs> I'm sorry to say to one of the jackrabbits on our board, um, it was a victory for the Sun Devils. Clubs and Pathways are always doing big things here at AVHS, and this past month was no different. FFA officers attended nationals all the way in Indianapolis, and Drama put on a great series of showings of their play, Cooking Can Be Murder. At the Victorville Christmas Parade, band and choir performed, and Key Club walked with the Apple Valley Kiwanis Club. Key Club will also be ringing the bell for Salvation Army this weekend. Sun Devils for Christ took a field trip to Concordia University in Irvine, and MAST will be taking a Disneyland field trip for seniors tomorrow. National Honor Society is holding a donation drive for the homeless to collect canned food, hygiene products, and self oh my goodness, and shelf snack friendly items. And Sports Medicine is holding a toy drive for kids in need. Outstanding job, Sun Devils. In ASB, we've been hard at work. We collected 185 pairs of socks that were donated to the Women's Domestic Violence Shelter in Victorville for Socktober. This next part is going to sound like an ad, which is exactly what it is, so I'm not going to apologize for it. But Lion has been planning our very first live game show night, which is to take place next week on Thursday. We have teams from four different clubs represented and some great prizes on the line. If you're not able to attend, I encourage you to tune into the live stream, which we put on by our camp. Academy. Tomorrow, ASB will be holding a free lunchtime holiday craft for anybody who wants to try it out. And on Tuesday, our junior class toured next year's possible prom sites. And from what I heard, next year is going to be a blast. They also have the opportunity to attend the Mayor's Leadership Summit and learned a lot about their community and how to get involved in the local government. There are so many exciting things happening at Apple Valley High School, and I want to thank you all for your continued support. We couldn't give our students any of these incredible opportunities without you. I hope you all have an incredible break, and I'll see you next year. Thank you for your time. Good job. California School Employees Association, CSEA, Nicholas Garrett. Okay, Apple Valley Unified Teachers Association, Karen Sabers. Wow. 
<laughs> Looking a little different there, buddy. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Timothy Holcreef. I am the uh, segment director for Apple Valley Unified School District, uh, Abuda. And uh, I'm standing in for Karen Sabres. Yeah, we've got a timer going that doesn't need to be going right now. Oh, good. Sorry. Good, because it's kind of long. You're representing Karen. It's okay. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Not a public comment, actually, an agenda item. Okay. You're good. All right. Um, so I'm reading a, a prepared speech by Karen. So. I'm going to stick to script as much as possible. Good evening, board members, Superintendent Nelson, cabinet, and audience. I hope the evening finds everyone doing well and ready for the holidays to come. If you haven't noticed, I am going, I'm once again missing the board meeting. Last month, I was at the insurance meeting retreat, and tonight I am, at, I am in San Francisco with the community schools cohort. Timothy Holgrief, our high school segment director, has been so gracious enough to read my speech. I also knew that Superintendent Nelson wanted a buffer between the students and her. Although I have not been here, I have been watching the meetings online, and I must say the student speakers are once again going to make me look bad with their great speeches. They are doing a great job. Um, since I was not able to attend the board meeting last month, I would I'd like to take the time to thank Ms. Okpara for joining us at our trunk or treat and helping to put smiles on kids and parents' faces by allowing them to pick out a book. We were able to hand out over a thousand books. On Tuesday evening, we participated in the town's Christmas tree lighting. We were able to hand out gloves for all ages, Rubik's cubes, spinners with poppets on them, and candy canes. The left. Um, the leftover gloves will be donated to the Parent Center. The representative from the town approached the table and thanked the Vuda for everything we are, are, we're doing. We do not do it for the recognition, we do it for the students and families of Apple Valley. As I stated at the beginning, last month I attended the High Desert Trust Insurance Meeting Retreat, our current trust, and a CSEBA insurance conference, hopefully our future insurance trust, I wish that I could have re returned with great news. However, in our search for insurance and hearing the increasing increases coming, we are very nervous. This year we bought down our premiums by 25% to keep our insurance rates affordable at a time when most are struggling. Unfortunately, we are not only looking at the 25% increase, from that, but also the 11 to 13% that Kaiser is going up and the expected rise in the PPOs and HMOs. We are not panicking yet, and we will have some reserves that we can use. However, we do not need to hear from, uh, we do not need to hear from the insurance trust that we have. We do not need to, okay, that might be a typo. Uh, we, 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 I, I think it means we, don't, we haven't heard from the insurance trust that we have submitted information to. I don't want to even think about how the members, actually all employees of AVUSD, are going to react if we are not able to obtain affordable rates. Cindy is working hard at this, and we are trying to stay optimistic in this venture. On November 16th, we had our first district safety committee meeting. The district nurses were able to show us the... Uh, stop the bleed kits and that will be installed in every classroom. That was very informative and appreciated. As we broke into groups and had great conversations about future topics to be discussed and then came back together, there were a few overarching concerns that everyone felt would need to be addressed in the next meeting. One of those was the extreme behaviors that are being seen and keeping staff and students safe. Avuda feels that this is a great topic because there, are, there have been situations in classrooms that have happened in the past month that have left teachers frustrated and some not feeling safe. I'm going to preface this by saying that the situations have or are being addressed. These situations include the following. There is a teacher who called me and said that she couldn't handle not feeling safe. She was very upset and ready to walk out. I told her to stay in her classroom and I would be right there. She has an extreme behavior student in her class. I was able to calm her down, 
We met with the principal who spoke to her in a very concerned and understanding manner uh, to come up with a solution and get her help with the student. And she felt better. However, because of being so stressed, she did take her baby bonding earlier than expected and doesn't know if she is coming back due to stress. I was, I was called to another school where many teachers were very frustrated with the behaviors, the consistency in addressing behaviors, and the follow through among other things. They were to the point that they wanted to meet at the district office to protest and say that they were not uh, returning until things were fixed. Of course, I told them that we need to handle this differently. Uh, a male teacher was tearing up, not because he had these behaviors in his class, but because he was seeing what his colleagues were going through. I only say that to give you a feeling of frustration. They stated that they are tired of hearing build the relationships with the students. They, are have, they already have the relationships, but can't make the students get along with each other to ease classroom disruptions. They also can't make the students get to class on time. I also met with the principal and was able to address the situation and hear what they were already working on uh, to help. Again, the principal was very concerned and understanding. I was called to another school where the student grabbed the teacher by her lanyard, pulled her down, and at the same time, pulled her shirt off and bit her. She has been very frustrated with this particular student and trying everything that she knew to do to handle the behaviors. Again, we met with the principal to come up with a game plan for when this student becomes aggressive with other students and her. I received another call and unfortunately the teacher had submitted her resignation earlier that day. She said that she had never been so stressed at a job because of student behavior and how she felt that this was the first time she had ever been placed on anxiety medication. She, was, she expressed her concern because she was, she has a student that bullies another student continuously and then they begin fighting. She was very frustrated with the lack of response and a proctor being sent when the students were fighting among other things. The last situation that I will speak about is one where teacher, the teacher pours her heart into the class only to be bullied by the students. When I attended that meeting, the teacher was shaking so badly that she could barely, she could hardly operate her computer. She was being pulled into a parent conference with hostile parents and ended up having to excuse herself from that meeting. As we went up to, the, to her classroom, a student came up to her at her door and handed her a notebook, apologizing for not getting it all to her and on time. She was allowing him to make up work. He then asked her if she was okay. She said that she will be. He then asked her again if she was going to be okay. The student asked to come in and speak with her about the stink bomb that had been set off in her class that morning. He proceeded to tell her that he, who, had, who had done it and apologized for how the students were treating her. They were writing the N-word on her desk and letting the stink bombs off in her class during one particular period. He then spoke about their relationship and how he wants to get back on track. I had no idea who the student was and just listened to their conversation and thanked him for stepping up and being kind. Little did I know this was the student that the parent conference was about. This ordeal with the parent conference continued throughout the week and the next couple of weeks. In the end, the teacher was told to allow the student to make up a missing assignment even though it went against the syllabus guidelines that was signed at the beginning of the year. This teacher walked away feeling defeated with no autonomy for her own classroom and as if they wanted, want to get rid of her. Although some may hear these situations and think it's really nothing or this is a few out of the hundreds of teachers in our district, but to these teachers and others that are being reminded that they are probationary and to those that are afraid or nervous to speak up, it is discouraging and extremely stressful. They just want to teach and be able to help students learn and be successful. According to board policy 5131, the governing board 
believes that all students have the right to be educated in a positive learning environment free from disruptions. Students shall be expected to exhibit appropriate conduct that does not infringe upon the rights of others or interfere with the school program while on school grounds, going to or coming from school at school activities or using district transportation. Prohibited student conduct includes, but is not limited to, discrimination, harassment, intimidation, or bullying of students or staff, including sexual harassment, hate-motivated behavior, cyberbullying, hazing or initiated initiation activity, extortion, or any other verbal, written, or physical conduct that it causes or threatens to cause violence, bodily harm, or substantial disruption. Three, conduct that disrupts the orderly classroom or school environment. Four, willful defiance of staff's authority. You may ask why I am speaking about this and its purpose. I would not be doing my job if I did not advocate for the teachers. There are many that feel defeated, stressed, and discouraged as an educator. The purpose is to simply bring awareness of what some teachers are experiencing in our district. We know that these behaviors are not only being experienced by AVUSD teachers, but teachers everywhere. It would be nice if when a teacher asks for a VUDA assistance, it would not be looked at as a negative manner. Sometimes they just want that extra help, that extra support. We hear, why did they call the union? They do pay their dues and have that right, even if it isn't contractual. We really are not involved to create problems for any, anyone. Avuda is there to advocate, support, and work together to come up with a solution that makes everyone feel supported and acknowledged. Everyone is facing challenges, whether it be in the work life or personal life. Let's give grace and spread kindness in a world where kindness is needed. With that being said, myself and the other three members of the safety committee look forward to the next meeting and appreciate Dustin putting it together. Thank you and have a wonderful holiday season, Karen. Thank you for listening. Uh, Tim, can you just thank Karen for sending her notes along with you? Um, and then Superintendent Nelson, I know she said that most of those have already been addressed in the thing, but yeah. if not, will you make sure whoever needs it'll, to address it? To I know, but office, I'm but absolutely. Yeah, can you make is... sure that it gets followed up? If it's not, it sounds like it is. But yeah. was there anything you. good about our district? No, yeah, really. That's terrible. I mean, it made it sound like our district is Chino Prison. We do a lot of good things. All right, let's go on. Superintendent comment, Trinae. Um, I'd like to recognize um, the elementary students that are here for the first time representing their school, doing a phenomenal job at that mic. You guys did an yeah, incredible great. job. Um, so proud of you. Likewise, our Vanguard students that presented, um, I loved that the president kept looking and smiling as she was not speaking. And it just, you guys do an amazing job. And I know you have a bright future ahead of you. And you're looking at the positions that you most likely are going to hold at both high schools um, in the future. So it's great to see you in the audience and, and participating tonight. And as always, um, the, our three high school students that get up and speak with us and participate in student advisory and a variety of things. Um, whenever you're at that mic and you misstep with a word, don't ever pause yeah. because I misstep all the time. It's hard to get in front of people and speak and we all make mistakes and you are doing it on a monthly basis here, supporting your schools and representing well. So very you, proud of you. You have improved really. Absolutely. Um, this month has been busy already. <laughs> and today I'm going to go from current to back. Um, today, Sweet Genius took place, as you heard, at Granite Hills High School. It's hosted in their bakery. And um, I was able to attend as students were getting ready to present their um, concoctions, which was a Disney theme uh, with a, they had to have a cupcake, um, a donut, and a ch the third option was a choice. So they'd have a plate with all three of those on it. The themes were amazing. Um, and <laughs> I wasn't able to make it back for the awards at two o'clock, but I understand that Apple Valley High School took the all over, um, all um, overall award. Now I know there's other awards presented, but nobody has given me the update to that. So I've been trying to get that information and I'm sure um, it'll be shared by our MD um, CP team later, Mountain Desert Career Pathway team. 
Um, the past, this past Sunday, I was able to attend the last dinner theater performance of Cooking Can Be Murder at Apple Valley High School. I took my date, Mr. Nelson, um, and we enjoyed the fried chicken and uh, meal and provided that was provided by Stater Brothers. I loved watching the talented performers, especially a few that I know personally from student advisory. Watching the last performance was fun as there wasn't the stress or nerves that might have been present during the very first um, shows. They were having fun and we were too. On November 10th, I was able to attend the Granite Hills um, High School production of Willy Wonka. As a child, yes, I was alive when Willy Wonka was um, the original movie. Um, I never saw the entire movie as a kid. I had a fear of the Oompa Loompas. What a joy it was to watch the Granite Hills High School production and overcome my fear, especially the fact that our Oompa Loompas were from Sycamore Rocks Elementary School. Um, the singing was amazing. I can't wait for the next performances to happen at both of our high schools. I attended the Granny Hills SCADA industry partner meeting. Representatives from local businesses come together to see what is currently happening in the SCADA pathway and offer information about current industry standards. Mr. Ekstrand has been growing the program and the alignment with industry standards so that our students graduate prepared to go into the workforce or further their education. Students participate, student participants shared their projects, and one skills team um, received commitment from an industry partner to review their journal and data for the Skills USA competition, which is required at a, a higher level. The Mayor's um, Leadership Summit, I was able to attend that for a part of the time while Ishmael was up at the um, podium being one of the um, council members and did a great job. And um, I look forward to hearing what um, the town is going to do at the presentation at the next town council meeting. They're actually going to honor those students and talk about the projects. Um, the same week, we held our student advisories at both um, High Desert Premier Academy and Granite Hills High Schools. Students focused on, and were thoughtful as they discussed topics that were most relevant to their school sites, not across the district, but specific to the school sites. And we have got some great ideas from both um, places. Um, and we had already done our Apple High one, but we will be getting together again in January. Several board members, staffs, and volunteers helped with the Harvest of Giving. I snuck over a couple times during my Masters of Governance training breaks that I was on in online. Um, this, along with our Sparks of Love support for families, is a time we realize how important the family centers are to our community. Um, sprinkle in a day off in honor of Veterans Day, a shot graduation, a Thanksgiving break, a California School Boards Association annual educational conference, and it feels like warp speed, and we're approaching a winter break, which will bring us right into second semester. Um, in closing, I do want to extend our condolences to the Apple Valley Fire Protection District as they mourn the loss of Engineer Shepard. Our thoughts and prayers are with them and with his family. Very good. Board comments. Rick? Sure. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, like always, um, we got some great speakers. This is the first time Yakaloma has been here this year, I believe. It um, is. But what are some talented young ladies? Boy, every one of them was very articulate. I was like really impressed. So I don't know if they were practicing or they just have a natural talent, but they did, did very well. I, I get a little ahead of ourselves. I know we have a presentation here uh, recognizing Dennis Bender as the 2023 president, but I wanted to, to take my time here as on the board comments uh, to thank Dennis for his leadership uh, throughout uh, this this year and uh, I consider Dennis a friend and a mentor for you guys that don't know Dennis is probably I might be underestimating but it's been over 50 years with the district as a teacher and 42 as, as a teacher and 16 B16 of the school board right member. so that's over half a century uh, involved with Apple Valley yeah. School District. Still kicking and, though. Uh, okay, so, um, but uh, anybody that dedicates 50 years or more of his life to education is an honorable, honorable person. And it's an honorable profession. And I just want to thank Dennis. Um, I've known him since the 70s and um, we enjoy each other talking on the phone and having uh, breakfast together. and um, But you did a great job, Dennis, uh, this year. Thank you. And uh, appreciate everything you've done. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll pass it on to uh, Amanda. All right, great, thank you. Um, 
follow up. Uh, I know with what Tim said, I know um, that that was a lot. And just by looking at my notes, it looks like maybe it was six things I wrote down. We have to remember that there are close to 14,000 students in the district. And um, one of the things that I wrote down multiple times was that Karen wrote, the principal was supportive. Um, and I just want to say thank you because, you know, she and, and she also had met with other staff. So, I mean, I just, it's nice to know that those concerns are being brought forward, that, that the staff does feel safe to bring that forward and it they are trying to be addressed. And we all know that coming back from the pandemic, that there are a lot of concerns um, that we're all trying sure. to figure out how to address and work through. Um, and I firmly believe that we will get through that. So, <clears throat> um, yes, there are a lot of good things in this district, Mr. Bender. <laughs> and I also feel like I need to say, by the way, I work for Victor District, but I am not a jackrabbit. <laughs> and I only wear green in December because we had that conversation before we went into closed. Because Ms. Akbar was like, oh, you're in green. I was like, she allows me to wear green in December. <laughs> yes. Green in December only. All right. My notes. This is the actual notes. Um, so I had the pleasure at the very beginning of the month to attend, um, I don't know if that's picking me up, a volleyball game over at Phoenix. I think it was Phoenix and Vanguard, actually. Um, Vanguard did take home the win. Um, but Phoenix hung in there, and my understanding is that that was the first game that Phoenix really um, was, uh, they were stepping up their game, um, and it went for the full three games for volleyball. Um, they Those girls were kicking it. Like, they were really putting up a fight. Um, Vanguard is pretty awesome on the volleyball court, though. I will say that. So um, they, it was just, it was so much fun. And honestly, the staff was out there supporting. I was surprised how many staff members are actually out there volunteering. And um, Mr. Edmire, you were out there. Um, yeah, so it was, it, was, it was just fun to be out there. Um, then shortly after that, as Superintendent Nelson mentioned, the shot graduation, that's just always fun to go and, and watch and see those kids and how far that they have come. Also mentioned, we had uh, the annual education conference up in San Francisco. Definitely, there were some excellent sessions um, on supporting students. I will say, like, it was just so nice to go in and and listen to all of these great ways that we can, as board members, really focus on setting the direction of the district and support our students and and move forward. Um, I did have the opportunity. I broke off from the group on one of the days and got to go to a different lunch and um, ran into State Superintendent um, Tony Thurman. And I was actually really surprised he remembered me from when we had had a breakfast with him in May. Um, so I had a good conversation with him. Um, Ms. Akpara, I was able to introduce her to the former um, president of CSBA, Mike Walsh. And so that was another nice um, conversation we had about the high desert students and kind of some areas of need around up in here. So we're hoping maybe we can get him to come up into this area and, and visit at some point. But um, overall, it was just, it was a very educational, professional development for all of us that were able to go and attend. Um, I have an arrow, which usually means I forget to turn the page. Um, uh, I just want to wish everybody, uh, tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, so happy Hanukkah, and also a Merry Christmas for, since we won't see you guys all, until the next year, so it'll be 2024 when we see you guys again. Great job, students, and we will see you guys next year. Real good. Thank you. Mr. Arce? I'd just like to reiterate some of the points that uh, Superintendent Nelson made. I also want to uh, congratulate uh, Mrs. Glisson at uh, Granite Hills High School in the Theater Arts Department. Just put on a fantastic performance of, of Willy Wonka. Hannah, it was great. Great to see you there uh, doing your part. It was, and it was especially great to see the, the young, young students from Sycamore Rocks, you know, and, and uh, I know you older students were mentoring them and bringing them along. And so it's great to see you, you know, instilling your wisdom and talent and, and giving our younger students that, that um, excitement 
and enthusiasm for the theater arts. So I know uh, you students and, and the teachers and the parents really put on a put in a lot of hard work, and it was very evident in the in the quality of the performance just how how much hard work you guys put in. So thank you very much. It was, it was really enjoyable. I also want to congratulate Mrs. Heitman and her staff at Sitting Bull uh, on a very successful uh, Spirit Day. I had a chance to go over there and just just kind of uh, take a peek around at, at some of the student activities on that day. And all the students were really excited to to uh, get their assignments done, get their academics done, especially their reading assignments done, so they can uh, participate in some of the activities there at the Spirit Day. So it was very very successful. So, so thank thank you for uh, for her leadership there at Sitting Bull. Uh, like Superintendent Nelson said, our Family Center just did an outstanding job uh, this Thanksgiving in their Harvest of Giving, uh, the, the ninth annual Harvest of Giving. Uh, Marianne Torres and her, her team worked for days to put that together. Just a very, very impressive work. Um, handed out uh, 200 Thanksgiving meals to, to families in, in our Apple Valley community. And uh, Mrs. Arcar and I had a chance to go over there and help out a little bit. And it was just, it was really touching to see uh, the impact that these simple little, little acts of, of caring and love, uh, just what, what an impact that had in the families on our, uh, in our community. In fact, I, I saw one uh, young mother uh, in tears, just in gratitude, just, just so thankful for the support uh, that she, she was getting through our district that she would not have got otherwise. So just, just again, thank you again to Mrs. Torres and her team for a fantastic job. And um, that, that's all. Just like to also wish everyone a Merry Christmas and look forward to seeing you back here uh, next year. Students, get some rest. This, uh, this uh, Christmas break, enjoy your time off. Uh, hopefully your, your teachers aren't giving you too many uh, homework assignments over the break. Uh, enjoy your time off, and uh, we definitely look forward to seeing you when you come back. Thank you. Very good. Maria? Um, I'm going to start off by ask, asking Ishmael, did you enjoy your big brother? Did you enjoy your big brother? Because you mentioned it at the last board meeting that your big brother was coming home uh, for things he did not. Okay, because okay, because I was looking forward to the uh, update. Yeah, because okay, we're we're looking forward. <laughs> it's always good when you hear these things and you store it and you wait and for the moment. But um, I, I have to start out with the students from um, uh, Yakaloma. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed what you had to share. Um, as you all can tell, I am from another country. So if you speak so fast, I lose what you're saying. You know, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. it's like, whoa, what are they trying to say? You guys took your time and you, you expressed yourself very succinctly. So I was able to follow along and know what your school was about. And whoever took the photographs, that we saw on the screen was exceptional because the pictures were so clear. I wanted to see if I can borrow the camera. Um, <laughs> and of course, our, our, of course, our high school and middle school students, I couldn't, I couldn't say anything more than what all of these people have said about how impressive you, are, you all were in presenting to us about what's happening at your different schools. Um, as we get ready to go on vacation, I am hoping that the parents, the teachers, the, the classified personnel, our law enforcement, uh, that they all have a peaceful and healthy holiday period. I had the opportunity to go to Yakaloma School. Actually, I went twice uh, trying to get myself into the book fair uh, the first time I went, the person was almost getting ready to go for her pe for a parent-teacher meeting, so I, I left and I came back um, because I needed to um, buy books. And then I ran off to uh, San Diego School and also ended up buying books because I wanted to make sure that I participate in what you are doing at your individual schools. Um, I, I have to say, um, everywhere I have gone, um, I hear other students talking about, other administrators talking about their district. And when they brag about their district, I think, you have nothing. We have everything. And how dare you tell me how great you guys are. We are greater than you are. Um, so um, I just want you to know that I, I have never been more proud to be a member of, of this uh, community. 
uh, we had the opportunity to go to San Francisco um, to learn as much as we, we can. And we had um, the best tour guide. We had a tour guide who also came for the training, but knew San Francisco, so shared with us how to navigate that big city. Um, and it was such a beautiful experience uh, for me. I, I left there um, with such impressive um, experience of how to navigate the district. I am hoping that 2024 will give us a better year. Um, it won't be like this year. You always want to be better than tomorrow. So I'm hoping that you all enjoy your vacation and uh, come back refreshed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I went to the shock graduation. This is a program put on for students in our district that are having trouble. Some of them are uh, actually tearing their families apart and it's run by the Sheriff's Department, our local school police and the Marines from um, Barstow. And it's uh, about a 16 week boot camp. And when it was over with, what a difference it makes. And they went through the graduation. It's really uh, heart rendering to go watch it. They have tears in their eyes. And then I went to uh, Hesperia um, with our superintendent, Trené. She addressed a group of senior citizens, probably about 50 or 60. And uh, she explained to our school district what we do, our academic achievements and our safety programs with our school police. And um, also our family food care program. And uh, it was well received, and uh, I'm going to tell you, she hit a home run. It was really well done. Thank you. We'll move on now, and we'll have the clerk read out any action that was taken in closed session. We have a recognition. We can we, can we, can we hold, can we and, hold do and do the recognition now and so that we can release the students? And I'd love for the students to stick while we recognize you, Mr. Bender. Is that okay? You Can we do watch, that? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Is that okay, board? Can we please do that? Yes. yes. Thank we, you. We have a second recognition for him, so hold up for us. Oh, you have one too? Yes. Okay. You don't let me get up. I'm, in, or you can I'm walking a little slow. I had my knee replaced. And you then, come when you're ready. I'll, I'll start. No, I don't know. I'm not that. He was, he was asking what was happening tonight. What's happening? And I said, Mr. Bender is the board president outgoing and a new board president will be put in place tonight. And he, he's glad you're staying. So um, during our annual organizational meeting, um, we recognize our current board president and talk a little bit about them. Mr. Bender was elected to the board in 2008, and Mr. Raleigh already covered a little bit of this, but he didn't know I was going to as well. At the annual Riga organizational meeting in December 2010, 2014, 2017, and 2022, Mr. Bender was nominated and voted by um, his peers to be se the seated president for the next board calendar year. After serving as a teacher in the district for 42 years, he was celebrated at this podium at our Retirement Recognition Board meeting in May of 2008. As is often the case with educators, they find other ways to serve students. So it is no surprise he ran and was elected to the school board. I find it ironic that Mr. Bender, who taught history within our school system, has also become a historian of the Apple Valley Unified School District, as he has been here since our unification. There is not an event or a topic brought up that does not have a, a story tied to it. He has a memory that includes detail. He can often recall the weather, what was on the front page of the paper, or the food that was associated with that particular event. 
If you ever have the opportunity to be in public, in a public place outside of these board meetings, you quickly realize he is a local legend. The, and people of all ages walk up and say, hi, Mr. Bender, do you remember me? They tell him their name and he chuckles and says, oh yeah, I do. And then with the detail I mentioned before, he tells how he remembers the adult who was previously a student and often asks about a sibling or a friend he associates with that person. I know he is proud that during his term as this board president, he has begun the process of getting Granite Hills High School Stadium begun. Since he is the only remaining board member associated with my appointment as superintendent, let's blame him that I'm in this role. I do not think it is coincidence that we are recognizing his service this past year as board president on December 7th, 2023. Also, National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Very appropriate for someone who taught and loves history. And I am honored that I get to present this um, plaque to him tonight as the president of um, the school boards for Apple Valley Unified School District. And I have to say, Dennis, I'm going to give you a hug in a minute. But um, he's been telling me about, my son works for um, the Navy. And he's been telling me about these newspapers that I remember being hung in his classroom, um, that students, um, some of you were students in his classroom and would have seen these newspapers. And so he told me, that knowing that my son is just a huge history buff, um, Kevin works on the um, F-18 Hornets. And Mr. Bender kept telling me, I've got this, this newspaper I've got to give you. Well, he couldn't find the one he wanted to give him, but he did find a couple others. And this one, he ha my son hasn't seen yet. He'll be in town this weekend. And it is the cover of the newspaper the day that um, Pearl Harbor was bombed. And so he has gifted this to my son. And Dennis, um, I, I feel honored because he says it's the, old, the, uh, the newspaper that he has that is older than him. <laughs> And so we're super appreciative, and it landed on the same day. And so how cool is that, right? So, Dennis, you've been wonderful. Thank you. It's been a pleasure working alongside you. Thank all of you, your teachers, your staff. You all do a great job. You have a great committee. You have to stay. They're not done. Thank you, Mr. Bender. 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 Thank you,
So we figured that since you are going to be sit, having a special seat at the Apple, uh, Granite Hills um, Stadium, that we will get you a stadium seat monogrammed with Apple Valley Unified School District with all of that. the all of our uh, um, mission this uh, district values. So you have a special seat at the stadium, and we have a card for you, and you will then see everybody wrote their special message for you. Okay. That's right. that inside it. But thank you anyway for all of you. what you've done for us, and we love you dearly. Kali, can you move, come forward, please? tell her what to do and she just does it it's like but really she tells me what to do all the time and i do it well um yeah. i wanted to take this opportunity on behalf of the board uh to thank kylie for all of what she ha she continues to do to make our lives easy and to um prepare prepare us for each of each and every meeting that we attend and to keep us in line when we um try to get off off the script uh, so today we decided to really go off the script uh, and not give her any clues. Um, but on behalf of the board, we are giving you this present so that you can um, go shopping, do whatever it is you've done. <laughs> but thank you very much. They are waiting for you. While she's hugging all of them, you guys know she really does run the district. <laughs> All right, you, uh, you youngsters, you can go home yeah. now. Thank you yeah, for being here. Thank you for game. being here and for doing a good job. Sorry it took so long. Thank you for all hey, being doing? here. Yeah. Hey, you have a good holiday. He's passing you yeah, up. Have, hey, have a good one. He's passing yeah. you up. No, I'm being, no, no. You're going to pass her up in height, like you person. already are. I know. I got one more year. One full year. Oh, Send me you. pictures. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. I'll be here. I have no idea. Pumpkin bread. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now what do we got to do? Uh, we have now to, we are, though. Uh, get, 
Anything done in closed session? Um, that was really nice. In closed session, the board um, accepted the recommendation of the hearing panel in expulsion case number four. Those, those have another item on the agenda. The, um, You're just doing your readouts. I'm doing the readout. You the will wait to do that another. one until that you get to the decision about discipline on the actual agenda. So I do the next Yep, one. just that one. Yeah. Uh, in closed session, the Board of Trustees took action in support of the following recommendation from the superintendent. Public employee discipline dismissal release reassignment transfer. On a motion by Buchanan, seconded by RC, the Board of Trustees approved the following. Approved the separation agreement between the Apple Valley Unified School District and employee number 3609. On a, on a vote of 5 0. That's it. Okay. Um, adoption of the agenda. Can I have a motion? I'll move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Presentation of the first intern, Matthew Schulenberg. Thank you, Mr. Render. <laughs> see how it goes here no i don't i think i'm good dustin thank you so much uh good evening uh members of the board and members of the audience that always gets much smaller when i'm about ready to go uh, uh, i'm up in front of you to talk about first interim and i just go over some of the facts about interim remember this is a report that certifies the financial conditions of the district it takes a snapshot these are our financials as of october 31st so I wanna make sure everybody understands these the assumptions that are reflected in this particular presentation and the documents you'll see in the consent agenda, agenda later on this evening are as of October 31st. Some different news has come to light as soon as, or as recent as I think I saw a headline at 4.30 this afternoon uh, about a multi-billion dollar deficit at the state level. I think the number in the headline was a $68 billion deficit. Um, so that's not part of this. Remember, we have a first interim. We have a second interim that comes up January 31st. So I'll be back in front of you with our financials um, in March. And of course, this multi-year projection does reflect adjustments we've made since budget adoption based on the 22-23 unaudited actuals, posting of carryover and any revenue and expenditure adjustments. Uh, there are three certifications possible. These are kind of my, my normal slides. We, are, we will be filing a positive certification, which means we'll meet our financial obligations for this year and the next two years based on those assumptions. <clears throat> Uh, and that's just some data on how many districts in this state are qualified or negative at the previous interim reporting period. So again, we will be filing positive. Um, and there's just some information we use. Of course, we use the state adopted budget as of June. We use the school services dartboard with the COLA projections. Those are all the cost of living adjustments. Uh, we use the San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools common message, which is written by a group of uh, county CBOs throughout the state of California, they collaborate on that. And of course we use the FICMAT LCFF calculator to calculate our main revenue sources. And again, you'll see down there, I just wanna make it very clear, these assumptions are old. So this information is old. Some budget assumptions and adjustments. You'll see we did not adjust our ADA from adopted to the first interim. It's still the 12-375 in the current year. That is a three-year rolling average. One of the um, ADA accommodations the state granted us coming out of the pandemic. We've also used that three-year rolling average in our 24-25 budgeted numbers, but we do use our actual P2 when we get to 25-26 because that is higher than the three-year rolling average. As we continue to project slightly increased enrollment as we continue through these years. And just down on the bottom, you'll see they start December 2009, we were 13,749. And then 1920, we had a little glitch that year. And we're still climbing. We're 13,772 as of this morning in the district. So we're, we're pretty close to where we were about 14 years ago. 
Just to remind everybody at budget adoption, those are the COLA amounts for the current and the next two years. Um, first interim adjustments, we did not make any adjustments based on the enacted budget. However, I wanna caution you down at the bottom. Um, I was at CSBA in San Francisco and sat in a presentation given by the Legislative Analyst Office called Show Me the Money. That was ironic, that was the title of the presentation because with that multi-billion dollar deficit at the state level, they're not gonna have the money to show us these next few years, most possibly. The LAO did talk about the uh, statutory COLA in that uh, for next year. Their estimate, now it's, that's the LAO's estimate. They're, the official calculation will be done by the Department of Finance, but the LAO's estimate as of last week at the presentation was a 1.27%. And the representative of the LAO did caution districts in the room that the state may not even be able to fund that 1.27% COLA. So if we look at adopted to first interim, you'll see those are some numbers just to compare how the budgets kind of morphed over the last several months. Again, this is from adopted in June to October 31st. Um, this is on the revenue side. Total revenue in the budget as of first interim was just shy of 240 million. Here's the expenditure side. You'll see we made some adjustments, mostly in the 4,000s books and supplies, the 5,000s services and operations, and the 6,000s capital outlay. The majority of those adjustments were expenses that were previously budgeted in the prior fiscal year, but were not expensed. For instance, we've ordered things such as school buses. They didn't get here. So the expense gets moved into the next year because we're counting on them getting here this year. That's one type of expenditure that we move. And unfortunately, no revenue goes along with those expenditures as we move those because we've booked a lot of the revenue in the previous years. All the one-time COVID relief revenue, both federal and state, those have previously been booked. That's why on the previous slide, you did not see a very significant increase in the revenue in the current year. <clears throat> Just a little more detail. This kind of shows the effect on the ending fund balance. Um, you'll see at first interim, we are projecting. This is combined. This is both the unrestricted and restricted side of the budget. We're projecting about a $40 million deficit spend this year. And again, that is because revenues were booked in previous years and expenditures that weren't completed in those previous years have moved into the current year. Much of that one-time money expires in September of 2024, so we're assuming it will all be expensed in the current school year prior to June 30th, 2024. So here's a quick illustration of our multi-year projection. This is the unrestricted side of the budget. We're currently assuming the previous COLAs in the 24, 25, and 25, 26 up there on that revenue line, that's mostly our LCFF revenue. If the COLA, the previous COLA of 3.94 is not funded, which is a reality, um, we're standing to lose between four and a half and six million dollars of revenue in the 24, 25 year. But that unfortunately is ongoing revenue. So that means 25, 26 is also less because the COLA will be applied to a lower number. It's a restricted side. You see a huge deficit spend this year. Again, revenue was booked in a previous year. Those funds are expiring, many of the categorical restricted funds. Hence, we're assuming they're all going to be expensed in the current year. And we're assuming in 24, 25, and 25, 26, we're getting back to what some might call a more normal restricted side of our budget federal revenue levels off, state restricted revenue levels off. And these are just those numbers combined. The key on this page is the ending fund balance. You'll see in 23, 24, we're estimating a little under 15 million and then a little over 10 and then a little under 11 in 25, 26. That allows us to meet our 3% required reserve through this particular multi-year projection, thus, filing a positive certification using the assumptions from the budget adoption through October 31st. However, when we get to second interim, some of those adjustments or some of those 
assumptions will change based on the governor's January budget proposal. And that will have a significant effect on this multi-year projection. So some concerns. Uh, what's the governor's January budget proposal gonna look like based on the very dismal tax receipts they just counted? Um, what's our enrollment in ADA trend going to be? Luckily, right now, our enrollment is still slightly going up, and our ADA is better than it has been the last few years, but not quite to pre-COVID levels. And again, some comments on the COLA. I talked about that a little earlier. Some milestones. January, again, the budget proposal. This says $58 billion. You'll see big state deficit because that's the number that the LAO used last Friday up in San Francisco. The headline today said 68 billion. Haven't read that, haven't read into that one yet. Second interim financials in January, again, we'll have some major adjustments to our budget assum assumptions. Uh, March, um, the negotiations really kick off up in Sacramento. Again, I'll be up in front of you uh, giving a second interim presentation. The governor's May revision comes out in May. That's when we establish our estimated actuals for the current budget year, which helps us to establish the beginning fund balance for next year's budget, along with the assumptions we get from the state of California and the governor's budget. And you can see in June, we adopt. And remember, we adopt prior to the state adopting. So when we come back in August, inevitably, we may have to adjust our budget based on what the state actually adopts. But hopefully, it's not too much different than the May revise. And then, of course, in September, we finally close the books on this year. And that, of course, affects next year's budget at that point. Any questions? <coughs> Hearing none, I'm going to sit down. Thank you. Good job. Mr. Bender. Okay, I'd like to turn it over to Trine for a second. Um, at this time, we would like to pause in a moment of silence to remember ABUSD family member Joe Albrecht. Okay, Kylie, time for those comments. Do we have any public comments? I have one. Leslie? <laughs> sure, need to grow. Thank you. I almost feel like I should sit back down after that. Um, good evening, members of the board, Superintendent Nelson, and district staff. My name is Leslie McNenley, and I'm speaking to you tonight as the bargaining chair for AVUTA. Last year, in the beginning of February, I presented our reopeners for the current school year, which included proposed improvements in class sizes and new school year preparation. The two teams have met several times since then and have successfully been able to come to agreement on issues such as evaluation document updates and teacher prep period language. Our last meeting was September 28th and our next meeting will not be until January 25th. We've been asked to wait so that the district can hear from, how the, from the state how money is looking. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it's looking good. Um, if history is any indication, it's reasonable to predict that we'll hear a recession is right around the corner and that we're in deficit spending and that there isn't any funding to implement any of the changes that we speak. Um, I'm kind of guessing that if you guys would like me to read your fortune, I can probably do that too. I'd like to remind you of the rationale for our reopeners. Our class size proposals were based upon the increased challenges we face daily in recovering from the learning loss associated with the pandemic 
and the increasingly tough discipline issues we're facing in our classrooms. Our other proposed um, ideas came from allowing teachers adequate access to their classrooms before the beginning of the school year and some paid prep time should they be willing to forego some of their vacation time to prepare for the first day of school. My request is this, if I am correct in my prediction that once again there is no funding available for these two proposals, what are your suggestions in addressing these issues? Putting large numbers of kids with attendance, academic, and behavior issues in our classes will not do anything to help us address these increased issues that we're dealing with, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to see how we can get these kids over this hump. So we were asked to give the district time, and we have gladly. Please give our proposals some serious consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Trinae, do you have any more comments? I do not, other than everybody needs to um, have a wonderful break and lots of relaxation and um, enjoy their families. Thank you. Board comments, anybody else? Rick? No. Amanda? Nope. Gary? No, just uh, again, Merry Christmas and please enjoy a well-deserved break. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Maria? Nope. Everyone have a good Christmas and a happy new year. Public hearing, none at this meeting, special meeting, none. Discussion action. We have our annual organizational meeting. And in accordance with Ed Code 5017-35143, requiring governing boards hold an annual organization meeting within 15 days, commencing with including the second Friday in December to elect a president of the board, clerk of the district, and the name of a trustee as an alternative alternate, who will also serve as a representative at the annual meeting of school and community college district representatives and determine dates of regularly scheduled board meetings for the coming year. Uh, for president, I'd like to make an I'd like to make a motion for Maria Apara yeah, to I'll be our that. next president. I'll second that uh, motion, Mr. Bender. Okay, I have a second. And motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Maria, do you have an idea what who you'd like to have for your clerk? Mr. Ben. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Raleigh. I'll All second. Right, that's great. All in favor of Mr. Raleigh being the next clerk? Aye. 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 All right. Well, we had a motion, a second. Aye. 5 0. Representative, you can volunteer yourself for this position now, as I understand it. So, if there's anyone that wants to Amanda did it before. sign up for this firing squad, go for you it. Do I do it again? Uh, Mr. RC did it last time, but okay, he did so not have the chance to actually serve. Okay, so, so you want to do it again? I think he should. Hopefully, you should. Submit. I'd like, yeah, do you want to do it again, Mr. I would yeah, Mr. nominate RC. Mr. RC since he was I'll, unable I'll second to second um, Amanda's motion. You need an alternate, right? Uh, yeah, that's a representative. Okay, then the now we need an alternate. It will be Amanda. Then. We need a vote for, yeah, for We need a vote on representative. representative. All in favor? Aye. 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 Alternate? Put Amanda back in. Okay. And hopefully I don't have to. Do you have a, you have a, you have a, you have a motion for that? I make a motion. That All right, I'll second that. that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. But I have your back. If okay. You <laughs> We have to approve the meeting schedule here. No. Uh, uh, are there any other organizational? Has interest to serve? I would like to be considered as a nominee. Is there anyone that would like to be a nominee? Uh, yes. So I do have an interest in um, serving as or ap applying to be nominated for the CSBA uh, delegate assembly, but it would have to be um, nominated by a local or county board, and then go before. So um, we are the local, so we can nominate you, right? Correct. Yes, okay. Yeah, you'll so, need a motion to nominate uh, her, and then you'll have to take a vote. A motion, yeah. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now, um, 
our 24, 25 meeting schedule. Do we have that? I think the it was in the packet. Yeah, we, all right, so we don't. No, it's in the it's it's attached to. It our was current. an attachment in our yep. board packet. In our board yeah. packet. So they were all Thursdays, I believe. So we need to vote on it. There were no surprise Wednesdays. You do need to vote on okay, it. Okay, I have a motion meeting. to approve it. I move that we approve it. So, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve the certificated and classified personnel action as listed. Do I have a motion? Move. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved Aye. Sorry, I didn't say it. Recommendation for requested leave as noted. Do I have a motion? I move. Second. second. All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on expulsion case four, number four, 2023 through 24. Do I have a motion? There's a readout. I have a readout. Oh, that's correct. Expulsion case number four, 2324. It's to amend the hearing panel recommendation to read to be expelled. To San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools Community School for the remainder of the 2023-24 fall semester and the 2023-24 spring semester. Student is to complete their rehabilitation plan prior to the end of the 2023-24 spring semester. And we get a motion. All right, now I have a motion for that. I move. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All, uh, expulsion case number five, 2023 through 24. The board accepts the recommendation of the hearing panel in expulsion case number five, 2324, that they shouldn't be expelled to San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools, Community School for the remainder of the 2023 24 fall semester and the 2023 24 spring semester. Students is to complete their rehabilitation plan prior to the end of the 2023-24 spring semester. Can I get a motion? A move. Second. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Expulsion case stipulated number one, 2023 to 24. A motion. A move. Second. I'll second it. All in oh, favor? I it was Aye. 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 Annual review number six, 2023 through 24. Do I have a motion? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Annual review AR number seven, 2023 through 24. A motion? So moved. I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Annual review AR number eight, 2023 to 24. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a consent agenda and in order to uh, expedite the meeting. Mr. We, Bender, yes. before you read that, can I ask that we actually pull a few items that I can explain what my remedy for um, some confusion in typos and issues with comparisons. Um, so if it if it is okay with the board, um, some information that I had provided to you due to some issues clerical issues um, number item number two item number 16 item number 23 and item number 24 um, and then I um, will ask that um, I have a few that once we get to those I know that there needs to be a discussion um, a board member had brought to my attention something that I want to be sure that there's um, a topic discussed and then we'll be able to um, have a plan in place for future items such as these having to do with an AR okay okay so you want to approve all of them but except well I'm just asking because of what I sent out um, because of brought to my attention by a board member I want to make sure that we have the opportunity okay to well I them. make a motion that we approve everything except number two 16 23 and 24 so move second, second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Number, two. number two is actually a typo. Um, in the process, there um, was a, the background on the public facing document stated that it was a donation to Vanguard Preparatory. 
and yet the donation form was accurate and said it was a donation to Sandia Academy. So um, there was, a, a, it's just a, a clerical error on the front page, but for trans, um, for transparency, I just want to make, call it out and make sure everybody's aware that we are aware now of this um, clerical error and can do better, certainly, on checking those. All right. We want to just move on to number 16. Yeah. Um, number 16 is a consultant agreement that um, has a not to exceed $21,000 amount for <clears throat> Joyce Gordon to come out and work with um, teachers at Phoenix Academy. The original agreement um, did not get to the board um, when they wanted to start the training. We delayed the training so that it could come to the board appropriately. Um, in the district background, um, the district consultant agreement talks about 12 dates, but those 12 dates are half days for, um, but the consultant agreement that was sent to us has a, a typo as well. And so the total is $21,000. And what I'd like to do tonight, if the board is willing, is to approve the agreement and we will bring back a corrected agreement at the next board meeting so that we do not delay their training as amended. All right, I move that we do that. Do I have a second? No second. second. All in favor? Aye. All right, number 23. Number 23 is um, the consultant agreement with San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools. We have published the date of February 15th on every piece of um, information that we have provided to the community about one of our meetings. However, in the consultant agreement that was provided by the county, it said February 14th. And we panicked. Which side made the mistake? Thank goodness it was not our clerical error on this one. It is calendared with the San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools to serve and support us on February 15th. They will supply us an amended contract. However, it, it, we need to get you, can, you can actually approve it tonight mm -hmm. um, because our dates are correct. Theirs were not. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve it? So moved. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now, finding number 24. This is really... Mrs. Buchanan. Okay. Go. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um, so on 24, it's the administrative, the AR regulation. Um, and part of the language for AR 6143, I should have printed this. I don't know. I'm getting old. Um, it has CSBA's recommendation on what we must change as well as optional what we can change. And so as part of this um, language, for grades one through six, we have the option of including two, it's, uh, it's option D and option E. Mm -hmm. And D is Educate, what is what did they describe it? Health principles and practices of individual family and community health, including instruction at the appropriate grade levels and subjects in. And it's the other ones, it, it covers personal public safety, fire prevention, protection, and conservation of resources. Cool. Those are those are required. But D is optional, it's venereal disease, um, grades one through six. And then E, the effects of alcohol narcotics, drugs, and tobacco upon the human body. Um, I wanted to have a discussion about D specifically um, and whether or not this board felt like that one as an I, optional, felt it needed to be included for grades one through six. Um, I personally feel we can go ahead and leave that one out and we can include that for grades seven through 12 because we have to teach that in grade seven and also in grade nine as part of the mandatory curriculum. Um, but for grades one through six, uh, I don't feel like that one needs to be. I would assume for E, the effects of alcohol, narcotics, drugs, is that going to be part of like our Red Ribbon Week? And our, or is if we leave that one out, does that prohibit It does us not from? prohibit us from doing Red Ribbon Week in those discussions. Um, okay. So we could technically... Well, those, you can, you can, can those two are new, for yes, for discussion. Those mm -hmm. two are the new portions to that um, AR. And so... Um, we do not currently do that at those grade levels, other than things like Red Ribbon Week. 
What is well, the rest the, of this word? I, you know, after uh, when I read when I read that, um, I just don't know if it is appropriate for a first grader mm -hmm. to be for this information to even be handed to them, and first, even second, even third, um, for them to um, be exposed to, um, you know, how do you get venereal disease? Um, what happens? Those are real deep conversations. Um, and I'm not sure that they are in that mindset to even figure it out. Um, you know, growing up, I, I thought you get pregnant by kissing somebody. Um, and now you know better. Um, but th these are information that we need to be careful about what we insert in our cur curriculum for our children to absorb. So I don't see why we need to add that. Because seventh, by seventh graders, by seventh grade, they're beginning to even ask those questions. So if they're asking the questions, then is is there an appropriate place to uh, insert it in the curriculum for them, um, for us to agree to work with? Uh, so I, I personally don't think that that needs to be in from first grade to even sixth grade. Even they can begin to ask those questions, and when they do, you get permission from the parent to be able to pass that information to the parent. That's how I see it. All right. Can someone put this in a motion? Can I you, move that. I, I want to just confirm the motion that you guys have right now is yeah. for page three yeah. of the what AR to remove yeah. item D. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Subsection. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Under the subsection. Right. Section six. Yes. All in favor? It's optional. It's optional. There's a motion and a second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, we're done. Yes. Okay. We did not take a vote on item two. We did state there was a clerical error, but since it was pulled, it was not oh, part of the original. Okay. Well, I move that we, we accept the gift. Accept it. All right, yes. I'll second that. All Thank in favor? you. Aye. Aye. All right, if there's no further business, we'll bring my last meeting of this board as to an end. As a, as a president. Didn't you say you wanted a second close, Dennis? No, we don't. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> You're just trying to be a funny one here. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. We're out of here. Thank you for coming. Oh, Dennis. <laughs> We're going out with a bang. Yeah.